So guys, why don't we use real rust in miniature painting? Let's find out. So there's a load of rust effects, there's painting techniques, there's loads of things to try and replicate rust. Why don't we use rust? I've been playing with a couple of ideas, so let's experiment and let's show you what it comes out like. So your main ingredient to this is iron powder. Iron powder is literally as it says, it's iron that's powder. And what we want to do is we need to mix that into a medium to get it stuck on to the, the, the test piece that we're doing. And we're gonna try a couple of different ways. The first way we're gonna try, we're just gonna try some cheap PVA glue and stick that on and see how it turns out. The next one, I'm gonna apply using a matte varnish. And the reason I'm gonna use a matte varnish rather than PVA is matte varnish sometimes have different types of solvents in them like ammonia and things. So we're gonna try that to see if that helps make it any better. Then we're gonna try one with vinegar in it because vinegar helps iron rust. And then we're gonna try one with salt in it. And then the last one, we're gonna try vinegar and salt together to see if it aggravates it even more. So let's get them mixed up and let's slop them on the models and see what that turns out like. So because Luke is apparently too big and famous now to prime his own models, I sprayed these up ready for trying out the rust effect. I picked a nice blue colour because I thought the rust would stand out really well against it because they're opposing colours. This was just a quick zenithal prime, give it a zenithal blue, add a little bit of metallic and then grimed it up with a strong tone wash from Army Painter. So how I'm going to mix this guys, I'm going to use just iron powder, in, I'm going to mix it equal parts on every test. I'm just doing this because 50-50 is always a good ratio when you're trying out new. So 50% iron powder, 50% cheap clear PVA glue. I thought the cheaper the better and if there's no colorant to it, then obviously it's not gonna change the color at all. And because it's really thick, I'm just adding a, a drop of water just to thin it down so it's more like a paint than a paste. All I'm doing is just stippling it on so we get that sort of irregular shape to it and we'll also do it on a flat surface just to see how it looks on flat surfaces so if you're doing any tanks or you want to rust up any flat areas we can see how that translates as well so i'm using acrylic varnish with this one same as the pva 50 percent Now, I didn't put any water in this mix because the, the matte varnish itself is a lot thinner than the PVA. So it's just matte varnish and PVA is this one. Same process before, just stippling it on. And then on the flatter areas, we'll see how this turns out as well. So this one's 50% of each PVA glue and iron powder. We'll mix that together to a sludge and then we're going to add some vinegar because vinegar helps aggravate the powder. Oh, it stinks. This one stinks. They're all going on relatively the same. There's no differences. They all feel identical because the medium's more or less the same. So this one is PVA glue, 50% with the iron powder, and then we're gonna pop some salt in it. So this one I like to call the fish and chip mix. It's got vinegar and salt in it. The idea with the salt is maybe to add a bit more coarseness, but also, will salt do anything? Let's have a look. So as all the others, this is exactly the same mix, 50% PVA, 50% um, iron powder, and it's got salt and vinegar in this one, the fish and chip mix. So looking at these after about half an hour or so, um, the PVA and iron powders just looking like PVA and iron powder. 
same as the matte varnish and iron powder, they seem to be working relatively similar so far. Nothing much to report on. There's a bit of browning up in the top corner where it went on a bit heavy, but other than that, it's looking more or less the same. Now, the real shocker is this iron powder, PVA and vinegar mix. It's already starting to oxidize, so I'm hoping over the next few hours, it will start to get specks of orange and everything else in there and start to look like really sort of heavy rust. But I'm really happy with this one as in this was looking pretty special. The one with salt in, just PVI iron powder and salt, it's the same as the iron powder. If anything, it's still drying. Um, it, for some reason, it's a lot slower drying than the others. So I don't know whether the salt has anything to do with that. And the salt and vinegar one, the chip shop special, um, that's starting to turn orange now because it's, it's catching up to the other one um, with vinegar in. Uh, so it's obviously the vinegar that's the secret sauce to all of this. So once I've had roughly the same amount of time, we'll compare them again to see if adding the salt makes any slight changes. Um, but they are starting to look pretty epic. So I'm gonna leave these now overnight and just oxidize and see how, how much the turn. And then tomorrow what we'll do is we'll try adding a little bit of vinegar over the top and see if we can pick out some extra orangey places and make it so it sort of turns stronger in areas where we want it. So vinegar is pretty interesting, but we'll see when the AM. Mm. <laughs> so guys, it's been about 12 hours and there's only two that's worked. We've got just the vinegar and we've got the chip shop special. And at first I thought it was just going to be the vinegar one that I really liked, but now it's dried. The salts had like a bit of an adverse effect. It sort of weakened the um, vinegar off in certain areas and we've got like two different colors and uh, variants in textures and how much it's actually oxidized. And it looks so much more natural. The one with vinegar, it's a bit heavy, but if you want that look, you can do it. So what we've found is if we'd use just vinegar, you can get some really dopped on horrible, heavy rust. And if you want to add a bit of salt, you get some really nice surface rust, especially on the flat areas. And if we want to thin that down a bit and get it a bit thinner, we could apply it to models as well. So we're not actually dopping it on terrain. You could get a nice thin sort of paint-like consistency and just stipple it in areas to get little areas of rust, which will work on smaller pieces, which is also brilliant. Now, there is a bit of a shimmer, which is from the salt. Um, we could mat that down. I'm not that bothered about that shimmer, um, but if we mat that down, you will it will darken it a little bit. But the world's your oyster with this stuff, guys. I mean, the bulk of the work's done, and if you want to go in with just some orange paint just to do a bit of dry brushing in areas just to really get some bright orange speckles on there, you could do that as well. So this rust with the salt in is a bit of a one-trick pony. For me, I'm quite happy with the overall effect, and if you're throwing it on terrain, it's not something you've got to paint can let it do what it's gonna do and it's gonna look very convincing and look great for not much effort. And when you're doing large tables and you want that big, large, grim, dark look, this is gonna achieve it very simply. You don't have to be a painting pro to do rust effects. You can use real rust. So guys, thanks for watching this video. Going back to the Maroots and people have always asked, can you do painting effects with household items? And the answer is yes, especially if your mum's got some iron powder in cupboard. But anyway, if you want to support the channel, don't forget to check all the links below where you can find all my basin materials and all my scenics. Um, and if you buy them from your local supplier, like the shops all over the world now, if you buy it from them, it also supports me. Let's share that love and keep all your local shops in business. But thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you again for the next video. Love, love, love. Vinegar and salt, the fish and chips special. <laughs> I'll start again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't drink Diet Coke before you start talking. Now, the only two that have actually worked is the one with the vinegar in and the fish and chip shops. And the fish and chip shops. Here we, here we go again. The only two that have actually worked. <laughs> fucking birds. <laughs> if it's not cars, it's birds. <laughs> and there's only two that have worked. We've got the vinegar one and the chip shops. Chip Chop. Chip Chop. Chip Shop Special. <laughs> Christ. I can't get it out even when I want to. Oh, it's hard. Yeah.
Yeah. Fucking <laughs> chip shop! <laughs> Got a fucking abadashery next door. Abadashery, yeah. that's, that's a shit. <laughs> What's a birdery called? Avery. Avery. Not an abadashery, that's where you keep wolf. <laughs> I'm going to get it this take. This is going to improve your really grim, dark, rusty fucking birds. They're laughing at me. They're fucking laughing at me. It's like Dave with fucking seagulls. I've got bastard chirpy chirps. It's fucking Ninjon's budgie. budgie coming to get me, fucking peedy. And I'll catch you again for the next video. Love, love, love. I'm now off to go kill the fucking birds. See you in a bit.